So then just the final talking point that I wanted to touch on was how I've walked a changed life. So firstly, it's like, if you look back on all these times I tried to change before, I fell back into this work because I didn't have a true change of heart. But this time, after experiencing a demon and then experiencing Jesus, I finally had a true change of heart. Um, and I wasn't trying to change on my own strength. It took me understanding that God was with me and for me and Jesus was real to uh, know that I wasn't alone. You know, I believed in Hinduism and all these other things before. And then when I encountered Jesus, I realized he's the only one who's going to grab my hand and fight these battles with me. No other little G God is going to do that. And so I realized I wasn't alone. And I realized too, that when I had the temptation to do other things, that there was two voices going on. Now I knew demons were real. So one side is the demonic influences telling me to do things to get me roped back into a life of sin so that they can exploit me for their pleasure, use my temple for their gain, for their pleasure, for their chaos and destruction. And then there's the voice of God. Are you going to go smoke this and hook up and do these things? Or are you going to obey God? And it's the it's the long game, you know, if it's harder to do in the moment to fight that temptation, but it gets easier over time and you begin to build that habit up. So now where I'm at in my walk with God is it's I've built my environment and my life and my relationships to support that walk with God. So the temptations aren't as hard to fight as they were in the beginning when I still had those kind of party friends and environments and relationships. Um, but step by step, God helped get me into a place that it would be, I wouldn't say easier, but I've built my life in a way that helps me honor him and stay obedient to him. Secondly, I accept that this is the cross that I will carry. Um, I think I may always struggle with lust and things like this. And I remember feeling really alone in that and embarrassed because I'm a married woman and I love my husband and I love my life and my baby. But there's certain things that will always come up in my head. It's like if you have different crosses, you may know like maybe your cross is drug addiction and you're always like sort of fantasizing about that last high and how that felt and the release from life and life's burdens. And, you know, I can relate to that as well. And that's one of your crosses to carry. So something that helps me because people don't always talk very openly about the crosses that they're carrying to stay close to God. So it can make you think like, oh, it's easy for some people and it's really hard for me. But that's that's not true. I think I think we all have crosses of our own. But I stumbled upon this website the other day. If you know my story, you know that uh, I recently became an Orthodox Christian because I was looking for the fullness of truth. There's a lot of false teachings out there, false interpretations of the Bible. So I came into Orthodox Christianity and I was reading this article and it led me into the saints who struggled with lust. Um, so this is from Orthodox Christian Fellowship, so ocf.net. So this article says, so here are some fellow warriors to help with the battle. All of these saints struggled with lust, especially in their youth, and all of them in turning to Christ overcame that passion. I've included their own prayers for help that I hope you can integrate into your own life as you prayerfully struggle with sexual desire and ask for the intercessions of these saints. So I'm going to just read this from their website. St. Mary of Egypt is perhaps one of the most revered and beloved models of repentance in the Orthodox Church. By the end of her life, she was perhaps the greatest spiritual pillar of her time, but her story begins with a young girl interested primarily in parties, socializing and seducing. A young girl who lost her virginity at 12 and spent the next 17 years pursuing sexual partners to satisfy her lust. When she is eventually drawn to repentance by the Theotokos, which is um, the Virgin Mary, she prayed, O Lady Virgin, who gave birth in the flesh to God the Word, I know that I am unworthy to look upon your icon. I rightly inspire hatred and disgust before your purity, but I know also that God became man in order to call sinners to repentance. Help me, O all pure one. Let me enter into the church. Allow me to behold the wood upon which the Lord was crucified in the flesh, shedding his blood for the redemption of sinners and also for me. Be my witness before your son that I will never defile my body again with the impurity of fornication. As soon as I have seen the cross of your son, I will renounce the world and go wherever you lead me. So you see this St. Mary of Egypt crying out like, feeling temptation, crying out. The next one is St. Moses the Ethiopian. Many people know and love the story of the bandit who became an Abba of the desert. St. Moses was the leader of a band of murderers and robbers who rampaged through Egypt in the early 5th century. When he was turned to repentance by St. Isidore, 
He struggled for many years with the lingering passions from his former life, especially lustful and violent thoughts. In his struggle, he became incredibly humble, never deigning to judge a brother for his struggle, knowing the pervasiveness of his own sinful desires and the destructive consequences they had in his past. There is no particular prayer of St. Moses that I could find, but take courage in this story from the sayings of the Desert Fathers. On one occasion, Abba Moses of Patera was engaged in a war against fornification, and he could not endure being in his cell, and he went and informed Abba Isidore of it. And the old man entreated him to return to his cell, but he would not agree. And having said, Father, I cannot bear it, the old man took him up to the roof of his cell and said unto him, Look to the west. And when he looked, he saw multitudes of devils with troubled and ter- terrified aspects, and they showed themselves in the forms of phantoms with fighting attitudes. Abba Isidore said to him, Look to the east. And when he looked, he saw innumerable holy angels standing there, and they were in a state of great glory. Then Abba Isidore said unto him, Behold, those who are in the west are those who are fighting with the holy ones, and those whom you have seen in the east are those who are sent by God to the help of the saints. For those who are with us are many. And having seen these, Abba Moses took courage and returned to his cell without fear. So that's, before I even knew that story, that's like what I said helped me in the beginning was realizing there's the voice of demons in my life and there's the voice of angels in my life. And I don't want to let the demons destroy my life by following what they're telling me to do. There's just two more, St. Justina. St. Justina was an amazing woman of fortitude. She was a convert to Christianity as a teenager and brought her parents to belief in Christ as well. She dedicated herself to Christ, refusing a marriage proposal from a suitor. When, through the power of the sorcerer Cyprian, Justina was tempted by multiple demons, during her prayers nonetheless, to lustfully desire the suitor she had just rejected, she offered up this prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, my God, lo, mine enemies have risen up against me and have prepared a snare for my feet. My soul is brought low, but I have remembered thy name in the light and am made glad. When they compassed me round about, I have fled unto thee, hoping that mine adversary might not rejoice over me, for thou knowest, O Lord my God, that I am thy handmaiden. For thee have I kept the purity of my body, and to thee have I entrusted my soul. Wherefore, preserve thou thy lamb, O good shepherd. Do not permit the beast which seeketh to devour me to consume me, and grant me to prevail over the evil desires of my flesh. So here's another great example of how to pray when these demons really are tempting you um, in your thoughts the way that these ones were for St. Justina. And finally, St. John the Long-Suffering. And guys, I'm going to link this uh, in the show notes so you can read these. It may be easier to read it than listen to me read it. But St. John the Long-Suffering. From the time of his youth, St. John was tormented by sexual desires. No ascetical feat seemed to be a match for the passion that raged in him. Even when he became a recluse, still he struggled greatly with lust, and the devil did his best to shake St. John's determination to overcome this passion so much so that he sent a serpent to terrify him and frighten him into forsaking his seclusion. On Pascha night, in the midst of these torments and his own temptations, St. John cried out to Christ, O Lord, my God and my Savior, why have you forsaken me? Have mercy upon me, only lover of mankind. Deliver me from my foul iniquity so that I am not trapped in the snares of the evil one. Deliver me from the mouth of my enemy. Send down a flash of lightning and drive it away. So these can be examples for your life if you are also carrying the cross of lust. And the third part of how I've walked a changed life is just continuing to build my life in a way that honors God and experiencing those fruits. And then once you've started experiencing those fruits and uh, built your life up in this way, you have too much to lose. So for me, that looks like my family, my integrity, how people now perceive and treat me, the work of my hands being this podcast and my book, um, and just standing strong on the other side of what I experienced before so that A, others following me don't stumble, and B, that they can see the fullness of life in obedience to Christ by watching my life now in contrast to the one that I once lived. I was at the mall a couple weeks ago with my husband and my baby, and we were just living our lives normally, like doing what we normally do. And we're eating our food and Mila's crying and V's comforting her, holding her and we're loving on each other. But in the midst of life and the chaos, and I don't know how to explain it. It was just one of those moments. And this teenage girl walks by with 
tears in her eyes and she was like, I was just watching you guys. And she was like, this is just everything I want for my life one day. And she just kept walking on. And I was just thinking like, like God bless her a and B, you never know who's watching and the inspiration and influence that you are making on them. And so if I can influence people to want the right things, that's what I want to continue to do by walking out my life, by being obedient to Christ and letting people just see for themselves the fruit that that comes with.